What's up guys, it's Josh here, and today we're gonna be talking about something just a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about finances. <gasps> yeah, the big F that nobody ever wants to speak about, that and sex. Today we're gonna be talking about finances and specifically how everybody can save just a little bit more money. Because I can guarantee if you're watching this video, you're wanting to save money, hence why you clicked on it. So my beautiful stylish friends, today I'm gonna to be giving you eight tips on how you can save up to 50% of your income. Yes, five zero, not 5.0, but five zero. 50% of your income because I believe every single person has the ability to save 50% or more on their income almost no matter what they are making. I understand that's a very large claim to make because a lot of people believe that they're not making enough money to support their lifestyle habits. But I am going to be telling you that it is completely possible based off of an average income of $52,600 in Canada. Just before we get going, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and push that bell notifications icon so that way you get updated every time I make a new video. I can already picture the haters now. They're gonna be talking about, oh, but Josh, I make way less than that. I'm a student and I'm working minimum wage job at a kid's place or at a restaurant. Doesn't really matter, but I, I just don't make any money. And I'm also 17 years old. The average person in Canada making $52,600 a year can absolutely save more than 50% of his income. How do I know this? Because I am doing it. So firstly, get yourself some roommates. Yes, I understand that it can be a little bit uncomfortable for you if you like living on your own, but guess what? Putting yourself up for success later on in life sometimes takes a little bit of sacrifice early on in your life. And depending what kind of roommates you have, it's not a sacrifice. It can be a fantastic experience and something that I believe everybody should experience at some point in their life. Not just to save money, but also to how to work with people and just share common living space. It teaches you to be a little bit cleaner, take care of your stuff, and trust me, I think some people could really, really benefit from this. Housing costs are one of the biggest expenses that everybody is ever going to incur in their lifetime. For example, the average Canadian will spend 47% of their annual income on housing. Think about how insane that is. That's spending about $2,000 per month just on a place to live. That is ridiculous. Imagine, if you get one roommate in there, put somebody in one bedroom, you can save yourself about an extra $1,000 per month, and that 47% of your annual income will immediately drop to 37%. If you can get two roommates in there, it drops to about 32%. That is incredible savings just by sharing some common spaces with hopefully some really good people. Moral of the story, get some roommates, save yourself some money on housing. Next idea, live below your means. The average Canadian has over $4,500 in credit card debt. Put it this way, simply put, if you cannot afford it, don't freaking buy it. The average interest rate for a credit card is between 19 and 29%. If you average that out, that is almost $845 of interest. On what? Say you wanna buy an extra couch, say you wanna buy a TV, say you wanna go out and eat dinner, say you want a vacation. That is just not worth putting on a credit card. Those interest rates are absolutely insane. Instead, only use a credit card if you can already pay for it in cash, but you wanna get the extra points for it. Do not throw money away to interest in credit card debt. Credit card debt is bad debt. Debt for say housing or real estate or other investments is fantastic, that is fine. There is a large difference between good debt and bad debt and credit card debt is not a good debt. How many times can I say debt in the span of five seconds? <laughs> Food costs. Another huge expense here in Canada is your monthly food bill. The average person will spend about $215 per month on food just for themselves. Now that in and of its own isn't too bad. I'm not saying to starve yourself to save money. That is, that's not it. I want you to eat well, I want you to eat healthy, I want you to be good and make good decisions. But where it becomes interesting is how much money people will spend on eating out. The average breakfast is between seven and $25 eating out for breakfast. That is insane. Lunch is even a little bit higher at between $9 and $25. That is a super high amount to pay for a lunch. Dinner, oh my God, between $12 and $50 on a dinner just to eat out. For God's sakes, learn how to eat inside. It is so simple to make a basic meal at home. Trust me, I'm relatively new to this whole life thing and even I'm able to eat at home, eat healthy, and pay way less than what I would be paying if I were eating out. I know everyone likes having a social life. I'm 21 years old and I get it. I still go out and eat with friends. However, try and eat at, say, happy hour. Pay half the amount of money. 
or you can go and eat dinner at home before you go out with friends and then you can pay less money when you go out. Say you get an appetizer and maybe one drink at max and then all of a sudden you're saving a bunch of money, you're still out with all your friends, you're still getting that experience of eating and just having a good time with everybody and you were not breaking the bank to do so. The next one is clothing. This is gonna come as a shock to you, but I don't actually spend a whole lot of money on clothes. I have one exception where I bought a custom suit, and that is it. All my other suits that I've purchased, I've bought at 50, 60, 70% off. All my other clothes, my sweaters, dress shirts, shoes, everything I buy on sale. So I am spending about 50% on average less than everybody else is on clothes. As well, get this, I have not purchased a single clothing item in over one year. How am I able to do that? Well, I buy versatile pieces that I can wear with numerous different outfits. So instead of buying a whole bunch of niche, trendy items that go in and out of style within months, I buy classic and timeless pieces that I can wear for Ever. I invest mostly in classic menswear and in doing so I'm able to buy pieces that have been in style for years and are going to continue being in style for years. Doing that means I don't have to spend nearly as much money on clothes as some people would otherwise do. And if you buy more expensive pieces that are on sale, you're still getting a good quality item that's still going to last. As well, make sure you pay attention to that label on your clothes on how to wash it properly. It'll just extend the life of your clothing a little bit more, which again means that you don't have to spend as much money on clothing. It can be an art in and of its own to try and buy a versatile wardrobe for yourself because I get it, it takes a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of skill. If you would like me to make a specific video on building a versatile uh, wardrobe that just gives you that sort of foundation that you can build off of over time without spending a whole lot of money and still having a bajillion different looks, let me know in the comments section down below and I will happily make a video on that. Vehicle expenses. <sighs> People do not get it. You do not need to spend $570 a month on a goddamn vehicle. That's here in Canada. In the States, the average is upwards of $650 a month just in a vehicle financing agreement. Come on, guys. Give your head a shake. You can buy a vehicle for way less than that. It is going to be a fantastic vehicle and it will still be super reliable. Trust me, you do not need to spend this much money on a vehicle. Even for myself, I will self-admit that I spend too much money on my vehicle because I made a bad decision when I moved up north. I thought, yes, I need to have one of the newest vehicles, one of the safest vehicles, and I'm paying $350 a month on a car loan. And I'm gonna be the first to admit, as soon as I get out of the north, I'm gonna be lowering this even further because I know that I can get a reliable used vehicle for at most $15,000, not $33,000, not $50,000, not $60,000. You do not need an expensive vehicle for your daily living. If you're a car guy and you love your sports cars, you love your trucks, this, that, the other, that is fine. I would consider that purchasing for a hobby and not purchasing as a regular general consumer. If you can get that cost down, you will be saving yourself hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Another way that you can save on your yearly expenses is on alcohol. People spend a significant amount of money on alcohol. I'm not talking just at the liquor store, but going out to drink. You can either buy one beer at a club for eight to twelve dollars, or you can buy a case of it, so of twelve for about fifteen dollars. What would you rather do? People spend so much money on going out, and again, I am not advocating against having a social life. You can still go out and have fun, but instead, why not pre-drink and save yourselves shit tons of money? Drinking at clubs and restaurants is freaking expensive. So instead, why not drink at home and then just take that to the club, to the bar, whatever you want to do, and you can still have an amazing time with friends and spend way less money. Gym memberships. I kid you not when I say I looked this up and people are spending upwards of 200 and that's insane. Are you kidding me? Like what? What could you possibly spend that much money on for a gym membership? You do not need to have the most luxurious showers. You do not need to have a bajillion things of fitness equipment that I guarantee you will never use. I spend $44 a month on a gym membership and I get everything anybody would ever need. $44 a month, that still gets me a fantastic gym with all the equipment I need with saunas and a hot tub. $44 a month. I do not need luxurious towels brought to you by the local gym 
to wash my body with after I work out. That is just insane. It is completely unnecessary. Lower your gym costs. I can guarantee that you are not using every single piece of equipment that that fancy ass gym membership promises that they're gonna provide you. That is garbage. Lower your gym costs and you will be surprised at how well you can still get a good exercise in and pay way less. If you're worried about a busy gym, just go at off times. You don't need to go when everybody's there. Go early in the day, late at night. You'll probably be okay. The last tip that I'm gonna give you guys is just to simply automate your savings. So instead of saying, I'm gonna put away $25 this month, maybe $40 this month, maybe $5 next month, just put a generic amount in every single month and automate it so that way you're not even thinking about it. If you're putting away a consistent amount every single month, you're gonna learn to budget your life around that and so that way you're not even gonna notice that you're missing out on it. You learn to adapt without having that savings there because you never actually see it. You have payday and it goes right into a savings account or an investment. If you wanna learn more about finances, please let me know down in the comment section below because I would love to take you along my journey of heading towards financial freedom. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section down below. And with that guys, have yourselves a amazing rest of your day.